Um, the topic that we're going to be discussing today is employees and employee drug and alcohol awareness. Okay, so you may question, okay, how does this exactly relate to HR? Well, I've come up with a few different facts that are interesting. One, productivity. When people are on drugs or drunk while they're working, productivity drastically decreases. Also, HR is failing to address these issues as about 70% of the workforce, or 70% of those who are addicted to illegal substances are actively have jobs in the workplace. And that is partially from a failure to communicate. Okay, so occupational health and safety concerns. Okay, so the law requires employers and self-employed to conduct their business in such a way as to ensure, so far as reasonably practical, the persons affected are not exposed to risks to their health and safety. So it's our job as HR professionals to make sure that employees are safe while they are working. And that means even if they are the ones who are uh, participating in illegal drugs or drinking while working, we are the ones responsible to make sure that they are safe while they are at work. Okay, so what are some of the effects that drugs and alcohol have upon your employees? Some of those that you can see are an alteration in mental capabilities, alteration of physical abilities, and these can be seen in poor judgment and reasoning of your employees, a loss of control and coordination, mood changes, risk-taking behavior, increase in accidents and, and injuries, and long-term health effects. Each of these has drastic influences upon our productivity, and um, we need to address them as they come up. So, our rights and responsibilities. OSHA requires employees to provide a workplace free from serious recognized hazards. Some of those hazards are obvious, like not having chemicals that are dangerous to people without having the um, uh, written uh, danger signs and whatnot. But some of these are also more ambiguous, such as um, having drugs or alcohol on a job site. OSHA also requires employers to provide employees with safe tools and equipment. We need to make sure that our employees are safe. Okay, so some signs and symptoms of AOD abuse. Okay, so some of these signs are a drop in attendance and a performance at work, uh, risk taking, relationship issues, changing appearance, and withdrawal. So you can see from these pictures, there are some drastic effects that can happen with um, illegal drugs, whereas some of them are not quite as visible. So we must be alert when we are addressing that. Okay, so some long-term effects. There, some of the long-term effects that we face are trouble at work, trouble at home, a trouble in relationships, and trouble with the law. Those who are addicted to drugs and alcohol, it usually leads to trouble at work in that performance falls, their relationships with their co-workers suffer, and that leads to trouble at the home as well. And obviously trouble with the law if you're using illegal substances, we will obviously eventually be caught. So the likelihood that someone will commit a crime or have an accident is higher when that person is abusing drugs. This summer, while I was working at a manufacturing plant, I had a friend, per se, that was suffering from addiction to drugs. He also had an accident at work and ended up having to go to the emergency room. The company 
that I worked for this summer was not very efficient in keeping its employees safe, as it was never actually found out that he was addicted to marijuana, and I do not believe that they actually ended up testing him afterwards, which is a not a very good HR practice. So what are some types of drugs that people can be addicted to? There's a wide range of illegal drugs and drugs that can give you different effects. There are over-the-counter drugs, behind-the-counter uh, prescription medicines, and illegal drugs or street drugs. Each and every one of these can be dangerous to your employees and are important for us to remember to watch for. So, some testing methods. <sighs> So testing methods, such as um, when you're testing for drugs, you do the either the urine test, the spit test, the blood test, or any number of different tests, does not test for impairment at the moment. It tests for if you had any of it in your system at that time. It does not test whether a person's behavior is or was impacted by drugs. It works best when implemented based on a clear written policy. We as HR professionals need to have clear written decisive statements in our policy so that we can clearly communicate to our employees what is expected. Also, Employee Assistance Programs, or EAP, is used to help employees who may have an alcohol or drug problem. On a side note, the um, employees who are in EAP can, um, if you do fire them, you can um, be in, um, it can go against the um, discrimination because of an addiction if they are getting treated for that. Okay, so why do we use drug tests? Okay, number one, to deter abuse. The um, Navy uh, did a statistic and found out that 51.6% of um, people who take drug tests for work, um, that 51.6% are deterred from actually using it because of the drug tests and the possible negative connotations that has it has with their future. Secondly, it prevents hiring people who use illegal drugs, which is a great thing for you to do as an HR professional as we want to look out for our employees and get the best that we can. Uh, thirdly, early identification. If we can identify early if our employees are addicted to drugs or alcohol, it's you can help either treat that or not hire them at all. Fourth, a safe workplace. Safe workplace is really important and it creates an environment where people want to be. And next, protect general public and consumers. If you have a delicate um, part that maybe your company is making, you want people to be attentive and aware with what they are doing. I uh, worked at a place that were producing medical parts and you needed to be very aware of what was going on so that they could, um, no bad product would be in the shipments which could have detrimental effects to consumers' health. And lastly, comply with state or federal laws. Um, we need to make sure that we are complying with the state and federal laws so that we do not get lawsuits against us. Next, drug and alcohol tests, the most common ways that they do it. There is the urine analysis, which I'm sure most of us have done. Um, and there's the breath alcohol test, which is also pretty self-explanatory. There's a blood test, which they will draw blood for you, a hair test, a saliva or oral fluids test, and a sweat test. 
these are all good ways for them to identify uh, drugs and alcohol and other things in your blood or fluids, we'll say. So what do tests detect? They detect amphetamines such as meth, speed, crank, ecstasy, THC, cannabinoids, marijuana, hash, cocaine, coke, crack, opiates, heroin, opium, codeine, morphine, and phenyslidine. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but they're like PCP and angel dust. Um, and it is important for us to know if our employees are taking these things. So how long do these things stay in your system and can be detected by these tests? So first, alcohol. We generally, it stays in your body about 1.5 hours, um, as long as it's not a ridiculously large amount. Amphetamines stay in your bloodstream for about 48 hours. Barbiturates stay in there for about two to three weeks. Cocaine, I think I messed this statistic up, but I think it's two to um, 10 days. And marijuana, if you're a casual user, stays in for about three to four days. But chronic use can cause it to stay in you for about anywhere up to 62 days. Okay, so when do we actually input these actions um, to take the drug test? So obviously, pre-employment testing is the most common test to take. Um, reasonable suspicion uh, when someone comes to work and they're acting strangely. It's not a bad thing to test. Post-accident, such as the example that I gave earlier where they didn't do it, post-accident is a very important time to put that into place because knowing what caused the accident is important. Random drug tests and periodic or return to duty are also important. Okay, so what is the legality? No federal laws prohibit drug testing. Several states restrict or question an employer's ability to randomly drug test. Employees not in safety sensitive positions. Okay, but employees who are in safety sensitive positions are very much so available to be drug tested anytime. Okay, so another important thing for us to do, as I stated before, is to know state laws. And someone with a history of drug or alcohol abuse may be considered a qualified individual with disability under the ADA and other federal non-discriminatory statutes. Okay, so now we're going to look at some stats. 24% um, of workers report drinking during the workday at least once in the past year. Workplace fatalities show that at least 11% of victims have been drinking. 93% of businesses are affected by substance abuse, and 70% of illegal drug users are employed. Okay, Ca the cause of 35% of all industrial industry injuries and fatalities is um, drug and alcohol abuse. Responsible, it is also responsible for 35% of all absenteeism. Um, okay, so the cause of, it's also the cause of 38%, 50% of all claims for workers' compensation. Okay, so it also accounts for 40% of all thefts. And employers who are on these substances perform at about 67% of their potential. So now we're going to look at some cases um, that I found on the internet that I figured were unique. If you could hand those out and get into small groups, that'd be great. Um, there you go. Okay, so these are three examples of what had gone to court where the employer ended up having to pay for employees' mistakes. Yeah. Provide possible solutions that could have 
helps the employer to avoid these problems and how HR could have handled, handled these scenarios. What are some of you guys' reactions to these um, scenarios that have occurred? That's a, that's a tough one. Um, cause it's like you don't want to be that annoying HR person that's like, don't do this, don't do that. Especially if it's after hours, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But I think like because it was on com company property, I think like, you have the you know right to you have the responsibility to ensure they don't do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, so it's like it's easy to say like they should take the steps to, like avoid these things. But well, in the situation, I don't know, I mean, it's hard to always be reprimanding people for having a beer after work, you know? Yeah, we don't necessarily want to be seen as the bad guy. Mm -hmm. I think, though, it might be reasonable to ask them to go to a bar or something. Maybe they could go to one of the um, employees' houses. Oh, yeah. 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 Just not in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, let's be honest. Drinking a beer in the parking lot is probably not as comfortable as going to someone's house, sitting on a couch, and yeah. Okay. Does anyone else have any insights, things they want to share? What is like the last say about like if they refuse to take a drug test? Um, which one was that? Oh, I don't know. I was just curious. Hey. Oh, if they refuse to take a drug test? Um, actually, didn't uh, look into that very deeply, but um, I also assume that if it's within the um, policy policies of the company that they can take the drug tests whenever they need to or deem necessary, that it could be grounds for either um, suspension or firing. Is that, wait, can you repeat your question to make sure I answered that properly? Um, just like if, if you require a drug test and the employee says that they don't want to Yeah, I'm just uh, gonna go with you probably follow the policies and procedures that you have uh, available to you. If they're not available to you, I think that you, if you are the, either the head HR person, then you'll have to make decisions or possibly talk to your boss. Or if you're not the head HR person, you can ask other people for their opinions as well. But I'm sure it depends upon the company and why you are demanding a drug test. Okay, so I think, wait, so awareness. In the workplace, we as human resources management professionals and managers need to be aware of and looking for employees who are suffering from the use of drugs and alcohol. The safety of our employee depends upon our awareness and regard to safety regulations. So, in conclusion, I would like to quote um, Robin Williams. Mm. If you need booze or drugs to enjoy your life to the fullest, then you're doing it wrong. We need to be aware of what's going on in our li employees' lives and um, be there for them when they need our help. And 1 Corinthians six nineteen says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you, whom you have received from God. We need to treat our bodies well, and does anyone have any questions? Lovely. Thank you all.